How you doing YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review and tonight we're going to be reviewing a beer I have extremely high hopes for. Um, it's a beer from Castile um, and it is based off of their Donker um, which is um, usually you think Donker you think the double but it's their quadruple and it is the Cuvée du Chateau which um, did a little research on it on this supposedly fantastic beer and Basically, what I figured out was is that uh, Castile had a bunch of their donkers sitting in the basement, and uh, after a while, uh, they cracked a few, and they're like, "Wow, this is delicious!" Because we all know age makes awesome beer awesomer. And um, this is their take on trying to duplicate that taste of age without the age. Um, so this is a 2010 version. So it's an aged version of the beer they tried to make tastes like an aged beer, so that should be quite interesting. It's the first year they produced it, so amazingly excited to try this. Um, hoping it's going to be super, super good. Um, it has to be good for a couple reasons. One, I'm a big Donker fan, so if it's going to taste anything like the Donker or better, that's a good thing. Two, I mean, I've touched a bottle, so I've got some stuff off of it, but you can't see it, but there's so much filth and dust on this bottle because it's been sitting around for so long in a shelf somewhere that when stuff is so filthy and dusty, it just has to be good. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to be doing uh, Cuvée du, du Chateau from Castile 2010 version. Um, that's all it really says in the front other than the words Belgian Ale and that Belgian family of brewers tag that they invented to make themselves look like trap tails. Um, on the on the side here, it says um, uh, Castile um, Belgian Ale brewed and bottled by Castle Brewery Von Hosenbroek, Belgium. Uh, Castle Brewery Von Hosenbroek, Belgium, imported by Vinton Importers, Sterling, Virginia. Sterling, Virginia, for you Patton Oswalt fans. Um, and it was bottled on. Doesn't know. Can't read that code. Anyway. Government warning on the side, does it drink it out of a goblet? Well, I have a tulip based goblet, and there you go, that's all there is to it. Um, always love castles, Castile, whatever you want to call them. Um, their labeling is always top notch. Um, I love the bottle shape for some reason, don't know why, just because it's different, maybe. I uh, love the bottle shape, love the labeling, everything is always pretty spot on as far as just style and class and stuff, so I'm always a big fan of it. And um, usually a big fan of their beers. I mean, I like their uh, Rouge. I like their Triple. I like pretty much their whole line. So pretty excited about this one. These tend to have a bit of funkiness going on in them from time to time. So hopefully this isn't too functified as far as the pour goes. So I'm going to be a little bit gentler than what I typically do with the pour. This is bottle conditioned, to be honest with you. Nope, it's not. There's not one ounce of anything in there. I mean, there's, you know, a little bit of yeast cake in the bottom, but that's about it, maybe. Yeah, so it's surprising. I thought there'd be some decent fucking donkers notorious for having a bunch of funk floating around in there. So, yeah. Um, not a huge head to be expected because of how I poured it, but there's a little bit there. But, I mean, with the percentage, I think it doesn't say it on here, but it, oh, 11% alcohol. Which is pretty much all, almost all their line is 11% alcohol. Um, not a huge head. Uh, if it was, it would probably receive pretty quickly. Uh, color wise, body wise, I mean, it's very, very dark. There's really not much going on there as far as any other color other than dark brown. Um, so, yeah. Um, density wise, you can't really even see through it, but if you look up through the edges of it, you can see there's a nice density to it. So, I mean, your castle beers, Castillo Castle, whatever, um, typically do have an amazing mouthfeel with, uh, to them, whether it's their Triple or their Donker or the Rouge or whatever. It's all typically really good mouthfeel-wise. So hopefully we've got a winner on our hands. Let's see what the smell is all about. It smells like an aged beer, and it smells like a delicious beer. Um, super maltiness, a little bit of yeastiness. That, that castle sweetness, man. I can't... I can't explain what it is unless you've had one. Like, they're, they're, it seems like their malt or their sugars are just done a little different than everybody else's. 
and it just tastes sweet in a slightly tart way. And it sounds bizarre, but a sweet with a touch of sour to it. It just smells so fantastic. It almost smells a little bit like the rouge because it almost smells like it has cherries in it, like your dark fruit cherries going on. But in a sugary way, not in a fruity way. It just smells awesome. I could huff that all night long. Seriously. But I'm not going to because I want to drink it, which I'm going to do right now. Cheers. cherry it's really good it's almost like somewhere between donker and a rouge the, um, the donkers just are just standard quad um, and the rouge is like um, um, like a cherry lambic mixed with I believe the donker so it's like a really nice cherry to it um, let's taste somewhere somewhere in between in a better way for me even though I like the rouge it's just that 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 cheriness is almost a little bit syrupy to me, so while I like it, it's just not the best for me. This is like just a hint of cherry flavor with that nice malty creaminess that usually comes with the Donker. It's a really good beer. A little bit lacking in sweetness. It could be the date time on it. It could be them trying to manipulate time combined with actual time. You know, because you're talking about a four-year-old beer that when it was produced, based off of what they tried to do, was trying to reproduce age. So when you're usually trying to reproduce age with a with a with a beer like this, what you're trying to produce is a bit of savoriness. That's typically what you're going to get with your age. Um, your Belgian quads, your old ales, stuff like that, are going to get a chocolatey, raisin eddy, not sweet but savory kind of taste to it. And that's probably what they're trying to duplicate. So the combination of that facsimile of age combined with actual age is the reason why it's not overly sweet so that's why like i reviewed the donker with my friend a couple weeks back and we we're big fans of that i'd probably put the donker a little bit above the well definitely put the donker above this only because that sweetness is there so it's the age combined with the sweetness where this has the age and just lacking just that tiniest bit of sweetness but it's still a fantastic beer it's not a knock it's just nitpicking at this point Amazing mouthfeel. Great taste. Overall, it's a great beer. Just, it, the only thing, if I was a really super nitpick, like I said, that just little bit of sweetness and just a micro, micro, micro hair of heat on it. A little bit of booziness to it, which is surprising, being that it's four years old. But it is 11%, so, I mean, it's to be expected, typically, with a beer of that high ABV. With something as subtle as, as this, it's not like an overly sweet overly in your face tasting beer which is really good and then heat, and like i said the heat is so mild on the end it's almost not worth talking about but yeah really good beer like i said it's taste of malt taste of kind of like a the cherry like i said the cherry is definitely there just a hair of that raisinetti, raisinous, not as much chocolate, but more raisin to it. Superb mouthfeel. Still overall great beer. I mean, like I said, your Castle, Castile, whatever brewery, typically their wines are always fantastic. So, rating wise, I'd probably give it like a 92. Um, overall, is a 92. Uh, availability, I've never actually bought it. A friend of mine uh, was in New York this weekend and picked this up for me at a six back to go place. So I'm going to give availability a big fat one um, because I've never seen it before. And I've had, I think I might have had a different year of this a few years ago. In a big bottle though. But I can't be for sure. So, um, so I mean, it's very few and far between. So I give it a one as far as availability. Value wise, I think I made $25 for a four. Um, and for me, that's decent. That's very decent. So I'd give it like a 7 on a value scale. So yeah, great beer overall. If you're big into your Belgian quads or you want something a little bit different, you want something that has a bit of um, cherry flavoring to it, but not artificially added or um, over the top like the Rouge, might well, definitely want to check it out. 
Um, and if you're a fan of just Belgian ales in, in uh, general, and do yourself a service. If you see this sitting around, especially an older bottle, pick it up and give it a whirl. And, uh, yeah, another review down. Uh, Matt with Master Beer Reviews. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, you can leave them in the comment section below. Um, yeah, if you'd like to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can at Massive Beers on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We're infinitely more active on Instagram than we are anywhere else. Besides YouTube, obviously, we're posting our videos um, all the time on here, but we put our video updates, um, previews of what we're doing, uh, contests we run, uh, just random awesomeness we put up there. So if you're going to follow us anywhere, do it. Besides YouTube, if you're going to follow us anywhere, check us out on Instagram. And yeah, another review in the books. So hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a great beer right now. And hopefully you see you next time. Cheers.